Why haven't I lined my walls with reflective materials? Good question! Or to put it another way, does matte light paint already do a sufficient job of bouncing light back in my plants, or am I missing a trick here? Now, if you're not a regular to my humble channel, then hello, my name's Everest, and I grow plants without the sun in my basement using grow lights. No, you haven't just listened to my opening gambit at a Growers Anonymous meeting. I'm just trying to emphasize that every photon my lamps produce is precious to my plants. This super-efficient double-ended Digimax 1000-watt HPS lamp housed in a Sun System ACDE reflector creates a rectangular footprint of light, but as you can see, a lot of it is simply hitting this back wall. So the key question for me is how much difference would it make if I lined this wall with special reflective material? Stick around for a few minutes and we'll find out. I've made a test grid with some string, 110 squares each 5 by 5 inches positioned just above my four Baxter's Bush determinate tomato plants. As you can see, they're enjoying life in an Autopot XL 4-pot gravity-fed growing system fed with cocoa coir and perlite. I'm also supplementing the spectrum of my double-ended HPS with a second grow light in an LEC 315-watt ceramic metal halide fixture fitted with a 4200 Kelvin lamp. I'm going to take three light intensity measurements at the center of each square, calculate the average, and plot the results on a grid. You can see I've stuck my quantum meter sensor to the end of this sexy looking stick here, so I can take readings at hard to reach spots without my cumbersome and opaque body interfering with the very light I'm trying to measure. Next, I'm going to fix some reflective sheeting to the two walls here and take the measurements again. There are quite a few materials on the market. I'm using Sunfilm brand reflective metallized film as I don't need to block the passage of light. I just want to reflect as much as possible. If you need to create a total blackout on a window or lightproof partitions within your growing area, then I'd go for something like Sunfilm Panda Black and White Film or the Light Tight Film by Easy Grow. Okay, let's take a look at the results from my matte white walls. You can see that there's a big range across the grid. A peak of 941 micromoles where the two grow lamps overlap a little and a paltry low of just 165 micromoles in the top right corner. However, my four tomato plants are located where most of the action is and I doubt that they'll actually reach those extremities. That said, wasted light is just that, wasted light. So I really hope that the addition of reflective material will help even out the playing field just a little. Let's move on to the grid with the sun film added to the two walls. The peak is in the same place, but now it's only 923 micromoles. Interesting. Our low point has moved slightly, but now it's up to 185 micromoles. So, first point, my poor light uniformity isn't going to be miraculously cured by a few lengths of reflective sheeting, but it has helped slightly. Things become clear if we overlay the percentage difference between the two readings. Now, you should be able to see where the extra reflectivity comes into play. The biggest increase, unsurprisingly, are by the walls. I can see three interesting anomalies. On the back wall, the increased percentage drops to zero, and at two points, it actually goes negative. This is clearly because of poor fixing of the reflective material itself. It needs to be fastened so that it's top and crease-free as possible. By the way, this is a lot easier to do if you fix up your reflective sheeting before you start growing and attaching other things to the walls. A top Everest tip there. You can thank me later. Yeah. Okay, second thing, the increased percentage drops to nothing in the center of the growing area and actually dips into negative. I can only surmise that my matte white walls actually provided more diffuse reflection than the sun film. Final anomaly, the 47% increase in the bottom left. I really don't know what happened there. I did double check. Perhaps it's just the way the light happens to bounce favorably at that particular point, but overall the reflective material increased par light levels by almost 5%. And this is just through covering two walls. Ideally I'd add some extra reflective surfaces on the two other sides also, but I'm keeping these open so that you lucky people can see what I'm doing. You dirty little peepers, you, yeah. Okay, so what did we learn? Well, reflective sheeting actually works. Who knew, right? No, seriously, okay, 5% more photons hitting my plant canopy is significant and will definitely affect growth rates and yield. So, I see it as worth the extra investment. Last but not least, creating a truly uniform lighting pattern with just one or two lights is tricky. It'll be interesting to see how this grow pans out. Make sure you're subscribed for regular updates and let me know what you thought of my test in the comments. Bear in mind, hey, I'm just a guy with too much time on his hands rather than a certified lighting engineer. You can only surf the internet for so many things and Reddit's so much. So, data and conclusions need to be taken with a large dose of sodium chloride. Thanks for watching. This is Everest. Out.